Thank you. And thanks to the SaaS Talk team for getting the tech support so quick. Cool. All right. Well, uh, Matt, we, we're going to uh, give it to you uh, and uh, uh, yeah, see if the, the presentation is working. Um, after Matt's talk, don't forget uh, that we will uh, go to the networking uh, uh, and, and, and have some have some fun. I'll, I'll come back and, uh, uh, after Matt's uh, 10 minutes are up. And uh, so over to you, Matt. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alex. Hey, everybody. All right. So we'll talk about how to end your addiction to paid traffic. Does anyone recognize this piece of footwear here? These are called Mahabis, and they're really expensive uh, slippers. They were mostly sold on Facebook. And the company was founded by this chap, Ankur Shah. Uh, he started a company previously and sold it, uh, and then he started Mahabis with the proceeds in 2014. His first company uh, digested a ton of data about people from Facebook. It was kind of like Cambridge Analytica, and so that made him one of the most knowledgeable expert Facebook marketers in the world. And so he basically found a product that was visually compelling and profitable in an uncontested space and started Mojave's. And then about three years later, he had just chucked a bunch of money into stock for the holiday season. And suddenly the price of Facebook ads spiked. And next thing you know, Mojave's went into administration. And so what I'm telling you is the, the guy who probably knew more about running Facebook ads than anyone else in the UK had this problem. Single dependence on expensive paid channels is a risky proposition. Um, you're never going to outspend or out optimize the bigger companies. You saw, you know, Kieran and the sort of level of rigor and resource that they got put into thinking about things like paid search. It's not going to impress investors and VCs. And frankly, it kind of signals an inside out view, you know, channel first view of the world. And just, I mean, like bottom line, if you kind of look back on it, who can name a great unicorn, you know, Stripe, Uber, Airbnb, PayPal, that got to be that way by running lots of Facebook ads. It's just not how you grow a startup. So quickly introduce myself, um, operator in the Valley for many years, worked at PayPal, um, early growth team at PayPal, stayed there for a long time, became a VC in the UK. And that's kind of what got me out on this because as an operator and a marketer, then suddenly I'm a VC and I'm seeing lots and lots of pitch decks and they're all kind of saying the same things about we're going to do some AdWords and do some performance marketing and hire a VP of marketing to do performance marketing and we'll do some PR and you know we'll try a network effects, we'll try viral growth. And I know as, a, as an operator, these are all just hypotheses and that you have no idea how your company is going to grow, but that's not it. So how do you grow a startup? So what I'll do is we'll just go back and look at the most successful startups of all time and ask, what did they do? So now I'm going to tell you the parable of the locksmith. And this will all make sense. This is the growth hack right here, the traffic growth hack. Came home from work one day in San Francisco. There's a lock on the front gate. And um, I looked at it. And one day, a locksmith had come by and put this sticker on it, emergency locksmith. Now, 99.99999% of my life, I don't need a locksmith, right? But if I do need a locksmith, it's going to be right here at this gate when I get home and there's like a broken off piece of a key or some chewing gum stuck in the lock. So this clever locksmith figured out exactly where her customers are going to be. I'm sure it's a her when they need her service or product. And she put her message right there. And fundamentally, that's what you got to do if you're a startup and you're trying to find traffic. So you've got to sort of think to yourself, you know, my target customers are vexed. They're trying to achieve a goal. Where are they? What are they trying to do? What, are, what solutions are they looking for? What do they think the solutions are? What terms would they Google? And then if you sort of work back and see the customer, the world through the customer's eyes, you're going to figure out where you need to show up and what you need to present that's going to be interesting to them. So let's look at examples. So early days at PayPal, once they sort of got onto eBay and decided to move off of eBay, they said, okay, we need to find like e-commerce merchants, you know, people who are trying to sell off of eBay on their own websites. And those people don't like wake up and look for payment processing. They wake up and think, I'm going to start an e-commerce site. I wonder if the domain name is available. And then the company that sells them the domain name is going to sell them hosting. And then they're going to sell them a shopping cart. And then once they're setting up the shopping cart, they're going to need payments. 
So at PayPal, we literally went out to every hosting and e-commerce shopping cart and domain seller in the world and said, hey, we stick a PayPal button in your cart setup flow. And for every one of your customers who signs up for PayPal, we'll give you a revenue share for the first year of it. And that worked like a trick, right? That was amazing. And for about five years there, that literally drove about 35% of PayPal's merchant acquisition. And that doesn't look like marketing. It just looks like a button in the setting up your shopping cart flow because we figured out where they were gonna be when they had the problem. Famous growth hack, most famous one of all, is Airbnb. They figured out that people who are trying to rent properties are not going to Airbnb because no one knows what it is. They're going to Craigslist. So Airbnb just put a button in their app, in their service, this was before apps, where you could syndicate your listing out onto Craigslist. And then people who were looking for properties on Craigslist would see your property and your pictures and click a link and go through to Airbnb to book the property. So again, they saw the world through their customers' eyes and figured out where they needed to turn up. <clears throat> Last um, big company example is soy milk. It's not a dairy product. It does not need to be refrigerated, but they know where you're looking, right? They're in the refrigerator aisle right next to the actual milk, and that's how they find you. So this works online, offline. These are big companies. I run a little company, okay? I have like me, and a business partner and like a part-time operations person. So I wanted to find startup founders and I know that they're worried about how their business is gonna survive COVID. So I made this free webinar, how to find product market fit in a post COVID world. And then to find customers, I said, well, where do startup founders go for information? Well, they ask their friends and they're on email lists. So this is a screenshot from my Google analytics. And I basically just, I didn't pay for any traffic, I just put, this webinar out on Google Analytics. And you can see here, I got 1,100 leads. And if you look at you know, where this traffic came from, so word of mouth direct, my email to my customers. And after that, what's this DG email? Well, DG is the initials of a founder of a woman who runs a, a pizza oven company in Scotland that I worked with. And she forwarded my email to, I don't know, at least 141 people and 73 of them registered. And so each of these is like a person's initials or some founders list or somebody who had worked with me previously posted my webinar to this list of founders. So as you can see, I ended up, you know, there's like, this is a long list, I won't scroll, but there's like a hundred of these. And each one sent me five, 10, 15, 20, 30 leads. And look at the conversion rate on these, right? 44, 70, 81, 61, 38. This is super high quality traffic I'm getting. So this works on a big scale like Airbnb or PayPal, and this works on a small scale for a tiny startup. So your homework assignment <laughs> is to go back and walk through the journey from your customer's eyes and start before they need your product, right? Before they need payments, they need to buy a domain name, right? So start several steps before they need your product or service and figure out where and when, where they're gonna be and what they're gonna be trying to achieve when they finally need you, and then figure out how you can turn up there and that might lead to SEO or it might lead to business development partnerships with companies who serve the same customers but are not competitive to yours. Or it might be some kind of referral word of mouth strategy. And you got to try a lot of stuff and see what works. So, but the bottom line is to walk through the world in your customer's shoes or slippers, see the world through their eyes, and then figure out where to turn up. And remember, who do you want to be? Do you want to be the slipper company or do you want to be the clever locksmith? That's it.